everybody this is Kristen so today I'm going to show you how to make this bag which is actually felted it's really really cool so when I say felted I mean that it is a it's solid you could cut this like a piece of felt and it wouldn't come apart so there's the other side it's a bit damp still but um, it's really really cool and it's super super easy to do let me go ahead and set my camera down and I'll get you some measurements on it isn't it neat I love it I love it a lot all right so felting is very very easy it's just you make a, a bag out of wool yarn and um, you wash it in the washing machine wash it in the washing machine on hot and then it will shrink it up and turn it into a felted bag so let's go ahead and measure the, the finished felted bag so this is actually a round bottom bag you want to do, I'll do it here at the, at the widest points. It's about 22 inches across up here at the top before you get to the handles. Yeah, it's 22 and a half probably. And then from top to bottom, it's about 15 and a half as you can see. Handle width is about two and a half inches. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and talk about this. Now this is very, very easy, easy, easy to do. This is completely made, completely made with half double crochets. That's all. So making the bag is very easy. I'm going to set it to the side real quick. It will hold lots of stuff. <laughs> That's for sure. And I'm going to show you and talk to you about the yarn that it's very important that you use um, to make a felted project. I have other felted projects on my channel. Hopefully you check those out. And as always, don't forget to subscribe uh, to my channel. Don't, you know, check out all my hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other tutorials. Hit that like button if you can. Thumbs up and leave me a comment below. So this is what I used. Okay, so when I made mine, I used West Yorkshire Spinners Fleece. It's a 100% uh, blue faced wool. Okay, it's 100% wool. This is the, the one I use is a roving style. You don't have to use that. This is a medium weight number four um, yarn. But in case you did want to use the same one as me, I'm trying to read it upside down. Uh, this is called Variations Color 004. BFL Roving, West Yorkshire Spinner. So I got this at the Wool Warehouse. Um, I'm sure you can find it at a lot of places. Now, but you do not have to use this yarn, but you do have to use a wool yarn. It cannot be a super wash wool. It cannot be a pre-washed wool. It just has to be a straight up wool. Um, all wools felt differently. I never felt it with this one before, so I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out, but it actually felted quite well. I'm very happy with the way that it felted. Another good yarn that I find that felt good is uh, Patton's classic wool. It can't be the pre-wash time. It has to be the classic wool. Um, I've used that quite a bit in felting projects. I find that it felts really well. Just remember, it cannot be pre-washed wool. It can't be super washed wool. It has to be 100% wool. It does not have to be roving style. It can be regular, you know, plied. Um, and it needs to be, a, you know, a four weight if you want to follow along with a me. Okay, so the yardage on this one is 164 yards. And I used almost seven of these so you're gonna need about 1100 yards of a medium weight number four 100 percent wool yarn so this is a big bag in general even after it's felted now the reason why you need so much remember because i said the bag is super super big we make it really really big it's a big bag now that it's felted but um it's the shrink factor it can, sometimes they can shrink up the you know up to half their size but generally it's around a third of their size that's why you may i wanted it to be a big bag in the first place so i made it super huge so when it shrunk it would still be uh, a big bag you know you don't have to make it as big as i did um because it just starts with the base round circle and then you go up the sides so you can make it smaller but just remember it's going to shrink at least about a third of its size so that's about how much yarn you're going to need I'm going to remember you don't have to use this you don't have to use this yarn any 100% wool that is not pre-washed you're going to be using a size J 
which is a six millimeter crochet hook. And then all you'll need is access to a washing machine. Um, so you can throw it in there and in hot water and that's how it felt. And then you can, you know, you just lay it out to dry. So do you guys want to go ahead and do it? I think it turned out awesome. I like this yarn a lot. I always get nervous felting a project because I never know how it's going to turn out. Felting is kind of a, you know, just like you don't know how it's going to look. But this time it turned out well. I like the stripes that it made here throughout. It's pretty cool. I think uh, it felted well for it being my first time using that yarn. Turned out pretty cool. Let's do it. Alright, so since we're going to be felting this, we're going to be using a very, very simple stitch. We're just going to half double crochet the main portion of the bag. So we're, we're going to go ahead and first start off with the bottom of the bag and do a basic flat half double crochet circle. So go ahead and start with a slip knot on your hook. And we'll go ahead and start off and we're going to do a chain of three. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the first chain to form a ring. Now you can use the magic circle here if you like. I don't like, so <laughs> I do it this way. Now we're going to chain one. So that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, doesn't count as anything. So we're going to work through the center of the ring 10 half double crochets. So we're going to yarn over and go through the ring, draw up a loop and pull it back and go through all three loops on our hook and that's our half double. Now we want to do 10 of those. So that would be number one, two, three, four, five. So continue going around until you get a total of 10. All right, so I've made it to the end of round one here and I have a total of 10 half double crochets. So now we're gonna be working in a continual round that way there will be no visible seam. So for that to happen, we're gonna need a stitch marker. I always just use a piece of yarn. So you go ahead and place it there at your last stitch so you know where you begin and where you end. If you want to pull on your uh, tail here, it will close up that center circle a little bit more like that. Okay, so you'll have 10 half doubles at the end of row one. So let's go ahead and start row two. So what I like to do, just so I know I'm going into the right stitch, is count back 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I need to go into that stitch and I'm gonna work two half double crochets into that stitch. So there's one and two. So for round two, I'm going to continue working two half double crochets into every single stitch until I make it back around to my stitch marker. So that's two in that one. And then two half doubles into the next. And two half doubles into the next into into every stitch and I'll meet back up with you when I make it back to my stitch marker. Alright so I've made it to the end of a round two and you should have a total of 20 stitches once you make it back to your stitch marker. So what we're going to do now is start round three. We're going to take our stitch marker out and move it up and now this time we are going to put a one half double crochet into the next stitch. So it's this stitch here that's just dropped down a bit. Go ahead and put one half double crochet into that stitch and then two half double crochets into the next stitch. And that will be the repeat for round three. One half double into the next stitch, and then two half doubles into the next. One half double into the next stitch, and then two half doubles into the next. Now I'm going to repeat this pattern of one half, one half double, then two half doubles, one half double and two half doubles all the way around until I get back to my stitch marker. All right, I've made it back to my stitch marker. Now your last stitch should have had two half double crochets in it and now you should have a total of 30 stitches. So we'll go ahead and start round four by moving our stitch marker up and you'll start to see a repeat uh, pattern every row we do on how the increases are done. 
So now we're going to put one half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So we're going to go ahead and put one half double into the next and then one half double into the next one after that and then two half double crochets into the next. So there's one and two and that is a repeat now for round four. One half double in each of the next two stitches. So there's one and then one in the next and then two half doubles into the next. There's one and two and that's the repeat now for round four. One half double, one half double, two half doubles. One half double, one half double, two half doubles all the way around until we make it back to our stitch marker. All right, so I've made it to the end of round four and now you'll have a total of 40 stitches. Every round will increase by 10 stitches and you will always end with two half double crochets in the last stitch before your stitch marker. So let's go ahead and start round five by pulling our stitch marker up. Now this time we're going to do one half double into the next three stitches. So there's one, two, and three, and then two half double crochets into the next. Again, one half double crochet into the next three stitches. There's one, two, and three, and then two half double crochets into the next. So that is a repeat now for round five. One half double into, e into each of the next three, and then two half doubles into the next one half double into each of the next three and then two into the next all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker. All right, I've made it to the end of row five and I should have a total of 50 stitches now. So now we're gonna move on to round six. So now it's going to be a one half double into the next four stitches and then two half doubles into the into the next. So one, two, three, four, and then two half doubles into the next. And this is a pattern we're gonna repeat for round six one half double into the next four, one, two, three, four, and then two half doubles into the next. And we're gonna repeat this pattern all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker. All right, I've made it to the end of round six, 60 stitches now. It's okay if it's slipping up a little bit, that's not a big deal. So we're gonna go ahead and move our stitch marker up and we're gonna begin round seven. And round seven is you can probably guess one half double into the next five stitches and then two half double crochets into the next. So this is a pattern that we're going to be uh, following until our circle gets pretty large because there is a shrink shrinkage factor when you felt um, it does shrink up a bit so I'm going to continue around so I'm starting round seven so it'll be one half double into the next five and two into the next and I'll repeat that all the way around and I'll have 70 stitches at the end of round seven and then I'll begin round eight and round eight will be one half double crochet into the next six stitches and then two half doubles into the next all the way around. Round eight will have 80 stitches. And then I'll repeat again for round nine. It'll be one half double crochet into the next seven stitches and then two into the next. Then round nine will have 90. So and so on and so on and so on. You'll always have 10 more stitches and you'll always, every time you start another round, you'll add one more stitch before you do your two half double crochets into the same stitch. So we're gonna do this until our circle gets quite a bit bigger. So I'm gonna continue this for a while and I'll let you know how many total rows that I do for the base of the bag. All right, so 
I have my base as big as I want it to be, and I've done a total of 17 rounds, which is 170 stitches. So now I'm going to start working. I made it back to my stitch marker. Now I'm going to start working up the sides, and it's just going to be rounds of half double crochet, except we're just going to be doing one half double crochet in every stitch. So we'll go ahead. So we got the base done. All right. So we'll go ahead and move our stitch marker up. And now we're going to be working on the sides. So this will be round 18 is what we're doing. So now all we're going to do is just work around and put one half double crochet in every stitch. Now, the reason why I'm using such a simple stitch is because when you felt it, and you, it's a tighter stitch too. I mean, I'm not using double, but the half double. When you felt it, it's just going to all close up. And usually most special stitches will just go away after a felt. I mean, you can use bobbles and stuff every once in a while, but I think for me, a nice clean felted bag made with either single crochets or half double crochets, double sometimes, looks really nice. But I'm going to work around and I'm going to put one half double crochet in every stitch, so no more increasing. And we're going to, I'm going to keep doing this all the way around. After a while, you'll start to see that the sides will form on the bag and, you know, it'll start to look like a bag. Uh, when I make it back to my stitch marker, I'll still have 170 stitches. I'll move my marker up and I'll go around again for round 19, one half double in every stitch. When I get back, I'll still have 170 stitches. So it's just rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds, many, many, many rounds of one half double crochet in every stitch. Move your stitch marker up every row and you'll always have 170 stitches at the end, every time you make it back to your stitch marker. So 170 is our magic number. Now we're going to have to make this pretty tall due to shrinkage. <clears throat> so I'm just going to keep going until I get the bag as tall as I want it to be. I'll let you know how many rows I do. And then we can start on the handles before we felt it. We'll want to add those first. Remember, we're just working rounds. Rounds and rounds and rounds. Just like we did on the base, except for we're not putting two half double crochets in any stitch. It's just one half double all the way around. Round and round and round we go. When we stop, soon you will know. All right, all right. I know it's huge, it's huge. <laughs> Let's hope it shrinks down the size, eh? All right, so um, I have continued on and on and, and I still, I made it back to my stitch marker here. And I still have kept my 170 stitches. And I have done a total of 46 rounds. And that is starting from around one at the very, very beginning at the base of the bag. If you count all the way up, you should have 46 uh, rounds. So why don't we go ahead and start round 47 with this big old thing. Okay. I'm going to do a round of decreases now at the top before we begin the handles okay so we're going to go ahead and start and we're going to put one half double crochet into the next 15 stitches so there's one two three four five six Thirteen, fourteen, and there is fifteen. Now we're going to do a half a double crochet decrease, which has worked over two stitches. So we are going to yarn over and go into the next stitch and draw up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over again and go into the next stitch and draw up a loop. So you will have a total of five loops on your hook now. And we're going to yarn over and go through all five loops. So that took two stitches and made it into one. So that's going to be the repeat now for round 47. We're going to do a one 
half double crochet in the next 15 stitches. And then a half double crochet decrease over the next two so again I'll show you one more time we yarn over and go into the next stitch and we draw up a loop yarn over again and then go into the next stitch and draw up a loop five loops will remain on your hook yarn over and go through all five and that took two and made it into one. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat this pattern of 15 half doubles and then a half double crochet decrease all the way around until we make it back to our stitch marker. All right, I have made it to the end of round 47. And your last stitch should have been a decrease there and you now you should have 160 stitches, 160. Now we're going to start on the handles. We're going to go ahead and move our stitch marker up. Okay, what we're going to do is we are going to start off by putting a half double crochet into the next 50 stitches. So we can just go ahead and begin, starting the next one. And we're going to do 50 in a row. There's one, two, three, four, five, five all the way till you get to 50. All right so I've done my 50 stitches there so here's my stitch marker and I really went, went around and done my 50 stitches. Now I'm going to chain for my handle. Now this you can do as long as you want. So you just chain one two make sure you keep track three four five six seven eight nine ten. All right so I chained 60 for my handle. Remember there will be some shrinkage if you decide to go bigger than that, but 60 is what I did. So now what I'm going to do, I got my chain of 60. Don't let the chain twist if at all possible. And now we're going to skip 30 stitches. So here's where I put my last half double crochet. Starting with the next one is number one. We're going to count over 30. And then we're going to put the half double crochet into the 31st stitch. So make sure you count correctly so you're not off. You got this chain of 60 on your hook. You skip 30 stitches and we're going to go half double crochet into the next. That'll be a, probably a little bit hard with that cha chain on your hook, but just like that. All right, so that's part of one handle made there. Don't worry. It'll get better, hopefully. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work across and we're going to do a half double crochet again into the next 50 stitches. So this half double crochet that we just did counts as number one. So we're going to begin. There's two, three, four, five, all the way till you get to 50. All right, so I, I, what I did was my 50 half double crochets in a row, and then I did my chain of 60 again. So this is the other handle. So I went ahead and chained 60 to match the same size as the other handle. Now you should have 30 stitches that remain um, to get to your stitch marker. So what you want to do is go ahead and with this chain of 60 on your hook is half double crochet into the 31st stitch here half double well it's always hard with the hook the chain on your hook well i think it is there we go just like that now you can take this marker out because we're not going to need it anymore so now what we're going to do is be working around these uh where we just chained 50 and we're going to be working around the chains of the handles. So let's start again. And we're going to work a half double crochet in every stitch until we get to our first 
chain of our handle, which it should be 50 stitches. This one counts as number one. All right, once you make it to the chain here uh, that we're gonna call our handle. So down here, the 30 stitches that we skipped uh, where we put the handle, we're not gonna be doing anything right there. So we're gonna work one half double crochet in each of the 60 chains of the handle. So let's just go ahead and start. And this is what we're gonna do on both sides when we get to the other chain too. We'll be working, oops, one half double crochet in every stitch of the chain. And since we did 60, we'll have 60 half doubles on the chain. Just like that. All right, I got uh, my 60 half double crochets on the handle, and now I'm just gonna work around again. Putting a one half double crochet would be into the next 50 stitches until you get to the next chain. And when you get to that chain, we'll do the same thing we did here. One half double crochet in each of the 60 stitches of the handle, and then you'll be back at the beginning. So I'll meet back up with you over here at the end of this chain. All right, I made it back to my starting point. So we went around one full time, half double crochets um, on both sides where we did the 50 stitches and half double crochets in each of the 60 chains of the handles. And now we're just gonna do rounds of that. Rounds and rounds of half double crochets along these 50 stitches, along the 60 chains of the handle, along the 50 stitches on this side, and along the 60 chains of this handle. And we're gonna do that until our handles get quite a bit thicker because we do remember I have to count for the shrinkage of the uh, bag and the washer. If you wanna put a stitch marker here to remember, you can. Um, to remember where you end and where you begin if you want to but just go ahead and start again half double crochets all the way around one in every stitch one in every stitch like i said on the sides of the bag where we did the 50 half double crochets on each side and then half double crochet in each of the 60 stitches of each handle round and round till we get our handles thicker. So I'll let you know how many rows I do for my handles here in just a second. But I do show you what it starts to look like. It, it's huge, it's, just, it's big, so. Check that. <laughs> it's big. So yeah, we're gonna have to make our handles quite a bit thicker. But I'll be back up with you in just a second. Okay, so I've done a total of eight rows of half double crochet on the handle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I just went ahead and half, I, when I made it back to my stitch marker, I just half double crochet, or I'm sorry, when I made it back to my stitch marker, I just slip stitched into the next stitch. And then you wanna clip the yarn off. You can make your handles thicker if you want. And then you want to make sure that you hide any remaining tails. Because we're going to be throwing this into the washing machine to felt it. So what you want to do now, once you get your tails hidden, is you're going to need to, if you have access to um, a washing machine, what you do is you throw it in your washing machine. And it's good to put like a pair of blue jeans or a towel, um, something in there with it to agitate against it. And you want to set it on the hottest setting that you have. You can put like a little bit of laundry soap in there if you want. Um, no, I wouldn't put any fabric softener. Um, I usually don't put laundry soap, but you can if you want. Um, and then, like I said, a pair of blue jeans or, or a towel or a couple towels, something like that. 
um, in the hottest setting that you have, you want to wash it. Now, depending on what yarn you're using, sometimes it takes a couple times to get it to felt. So you want to let it run completely through the cycle and then look at it. And there should be no holes at all in your crochet. It should like a, look like a solid piece of fabric, like a solid piece of felt, you know? That's what it should look like. Hopefully it shrinks down <laughs> shrinks down a bit, but I'm going to go, and I hope I made my handles big enough. I, I hope so. That's I always worry about that. But I'm going to go throw mine in the washer on hot water with a pair of blue jeans or a towel and let it run all the way through. And then I'm going to check it out, look at it. And if it appears that it's not felted all the way, like I can still see through it or whatever, I'll do it again. Hot water, pair of blue jeans, old towel, run it through again. And then uh, keep doing that until it gets felted. Usually it only takes once, but sometimes depending on what wool you're using, you might have to do it twice. All right, here's mine. So I had to wash mine twice in hot water to get it to felt. Uh, it felt pretty good the first time, but I went ahead and did it again because there were a little, few little spots that you could see through, but now it is completely felted. That's just the stripes of the yarn. Now, up here it was pretty solid. There were no stripes, but uh, it's pretty dang cool. So once you're done felting it in your washer, in the hot water, and you get it to where you like it, um, you can, you know, let it run through the spin cycle and everything. And you get it to where you like it. You can bring it up and lay it out to dry. Something I do, which most people probably will tell you not to do, I actually throw it in the dryer on high heat just for about five to 10 minutes by its, you know, with a couple, you know, with maybe with the blue jeans that you wash or something, just for a bit. I usually flip it uh, wrong side out, throw it in the dryer for about five or 10 minutes. It, it, not to where it completely dries. It's still a little damp, but you know, I, I do that. You don't have to. Um, I really don't even know what it does. It just helps it dry up a bit. I think it even uh, felt it a little bit more. But now um, I have mine laid out and I'm gonna let it dry the rest of the way right here. It's pretty dry, but not completely. It's, it's damp, I guess. I think it looks cool. I think it's super cool. It shrunk up quite a bit too, um, but not so much that it's, it's still a big bag. So I really, really like it. Well, that's it. After you're after it's dry it's ready to use it's felted and ready to go it's awesome thanks everybody for watching i hope that you enjoyed my tutorial don't forget to like and subscribe check me out on instagram and facebook and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys